Okay guys, so everything is ready for my bathtub ritual. There are the candles and I have some Prosecco this time and some water because I got to stay hydrated. Uh, this time I didn't have anything that was bubbly to put in my bath, but let me show you what I put in there. So I have these Serenity bath salts. Uh, you see that there's sea salt and pink Himalayan salt crystals and French lavender. So my bathroom has a really great lavender smell. But I don't know if it's from the bath salts or if it's from this is also what I've added in there. I never take a bath without putting oil in the tub too because I do have dry skin. So yes. I am really looking forward to this and uh, see you guys in a second where I will talk about what I thought about while I was in the bathtub. Hi guys, it is time for my bathtub ritual video. So if you're new to my channel, um, my plan in the beginning was to do a bathtub ritual um, around every decade of weight loss so that, um, you know, I run a really nice relaxing bath and then while I'm in the bath, I think back over the progress that I've made. I was doing this as a way to make sure that I never forget all of my hard work. Um, and so I take a notebook with me in the bathtub and I jot down some uh, some of my thoughts and I think about NSVs and things like that. And really, like I said, I just think about my whole journey and how far I've come. And so it actually has been a little while since I've done one of these. I think maybe the last time I did it was to celebrate getting out of the 230s or the 240s. But I think it was to celebrate getting out of the 230s. Um, I don't remember. So it's been a while because this one was for me to celebrate getting out of the 200s. So it was to celebrate Wonderland. And you know, the funny thing is, is that I actually have not taken a bath since my last bathtub ritual, which was several months ago. Now, of course, I take a shower every day, but you know, I haven't taken a bath in my bathtub. And I realized that one of the reasons why is because for the past many, many years, I'm so used to avoiding baths because it takes so much effort to clean that bathtub. Bending over and scrubbing the tub, because I always use lots of oils and things like that. So bending over and scrubbing the tub or kneeling down on the floor to scrub the tub is so annoying and time consuming and exhausting that usually every time I take a bath and then I have to clean out that tub, it's like, oh, I'm not sure that it's worth it. Well, the thing is, is that I keep forgetting that it's not that bad anymore. And as a matter of fact, this time when I cleaned out the tub, it was just like nothing. I mean, it's like it took me two minutes or something. And I was like, how could this even be hard? Because it's so easy. But I know that it used to be hard. <laughs> I mean, I know that for years. But it was so easy, and so now I just need to make sure that I remember that it's easy so that I can start taking baths more often because it really is so enjoyable. Um, even though when I did my last ritual celebrating being out of the 230s, um, you know, the tub, well, my tub is a nice uh, round garden tub, and so it's big anyway. And so the last time I did this, you know, the tub was nice and roomy. But this time, wow, you know, so it's like I've lost 20-something more pounds since the, my previous video. It's really made a difference. I mean, that tub was on, felt like a swimming pool almost to me. <laughs> and so I just can't even, you know, when I get to goal, how, how large this bathtub is going to seem. So anyway, that was just, well, that was NSVs, which is part of the purpose of this whole video. Um, so, yeah, um, Wonderland. So, the last time that I was in Wonderland was in 2013, just for a very short period of time. Um, I was there for about six months, 
And then I was back out of Wonderland, um, mostly due to um, fracturing my bone spur. And I talk about that in, um, I have an early video where I talk about my weight loss history, like my whole life story with my weight loss. There's a set of two videos um, near the beginning of my uh, videos and so if you want to hear that whole story you'll have to go back there even though I will repeat just a few things for people who are new um, so what I'm looking forward to now you know what is my next goal well in 2013 which like I said was the last time that I was in Wonderland I got down to 193 pounds so now my next goal is 192 pounds <laughs> because once I reach 192 pounds that will be my lowest weight since I was like 19 or 20 I'm not sure exactly but um, I'm about to turn 46 so in a in what like 26 years it will be my lowest weight when I hit 192 26 years <laughs> I can't even believe that I can say things like this was 30 years ago. I mean, wow. <laughs> Talking about getting up there in age. But, um, <clears throat> so I actually do already have something planned. If you know me, you know that I'm really good at rewarding myself for things. So I have two things planned. First of all, I am going to go to Sephora and have a makeover done. Now I shop at Sephora a lot, but I have never ever done a makeover. And so I'm going to go in there, I'm going to do one of their 50 minute makeovers and just see what, you know, see what they say. Maybe I'll discover some new products, um, you know, maybe it's time to change up. I don't know, my blush or something like that. You know, I don't know what I'll learn. But I think it will be really interesting and appropriate for, you know, my lowest weight in 26 years to have a makeover. And then the second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to have a special spa day. Now, I already have a Massage Envy membership. So if you don't know what Massage Envy is, um... That's like a spa club. There's lots of locations all over the United States. I pay a low monthly fee and then I get a one credit every month that I can use for a massage or a facial. And they take the money out of your account every month whether you use it or not. It comes out automatically. And so that I bring that up because actually I've been so busy that I have not been even using up my massages. I think the last time I checked I had like eight credits. Um, so each one of those is equal to like an hour or a uh, facial. And that's why if you watch me on Instagram, I'll say things like, oh, I'm going for an hour and a half massage or a two hour massage. Because that's because I'm trying to use up my credits. Um... And as a matter of fact, I have a massage in just a couple days. I have an hour and a half massage scheduled so I can start using up my credits. But anyway, so even though I do go to Massage Envy, you know, that's kind of a budget, no frills type of place. I want to have some spa treatments at one of our really nice spas that we have here in Arizona. We have a lot of spas. And so, you know, one of the ones that has a sauna and a steam room and a whirlpool, like things like that. So I'm pretty sure which one I'm going to choose uh, when it happens. I'll tell you guys more about it at that time. So that's my next goal, 192. We'll see um, how long it takes for me to get there. Um, now, <clears throat> the other thing. So I started thinking about sizes and weights and goal because I was thinking, well, What's next after 192? I think next is um, goal or my surgeon's goal. So my surgeon's goal for me is a BMI of like 30 or really 29.9 I think is what puts me at overweight and 30 is still obese. Uh, so that is a weight of 169. So that is my surgeon's goal for me. And that sounds pretty good to me. Um, you know, it's been so long since I was that weight. Um, you know, I was a teenager. So I don't, I don't know how I look and how I feel at that weight. Um, and the thing is, is that 
you know, what I started thinking about is the truth is I don't even have good memories of any of those previous weights because even though I wasn't over 200 pounds, um, you know, in elementary school or in high school, I felt like I was. Um, and let me, you know, kind of explain that. I was the largest person in my entire family, and I have a large family. My mother has six sisters, my father has three sisters and three brothers. They all at least have two or three kids, and some have more. So I have a lot of first cousins, and I grew up um, spending a lot of time with my cousins on both sides of the family. I was the largest person in my entire family, so I was bigger than all the aunts and the uncles and the cousins, except for one aunt, actually. One of my mother's sisters has always been morbidly obese as long as I've ever known her, and actually most people automatically assume that I'm her daughter, like if we're together... They automatically think that she's my mother and not my actual uh, mother. So, um, oh, so because of that, uh, so I've always been teased about my weight. I was teased in my own home uh, by my parents and my brother and all of my family members. And then in school, um, I was constantly teased. I think, okay, I have a few more minutes. Um... I was constantly teased. It was more when I was younger and less as I got older. Um, but, you know, I think it was because of the times. You know, when I was in elementary school, that was in the 70s. And um, I was in high school in the 80s. And, you know, childhood obesity was not as big of a problem back then as it is now. So even if I was just 20 pounds more than all the other kids, I did seem really big compared to the other kids. And I really think that a lot of the time, I really was only about maybe 20 pounds more than the other people um, in elementary school. Now, as I got older, my weight probably got a little bit higher than some of the other girls. But still, it's like I was surrounded by people who were wearing smalls and extra smalls, and then I was wearing larges. And, you know, now I think, oh, a large doesn't even seem all that big. But it is when you're surrounded pe by people who are extra smalls. And actually, for a lot of my childhood, my mother was a size zero. So, you know, being around tiny people really made me think, that I was really fat, even though I actually wasn't. So I bring that up because when I think of being one in the 160s or the 150s or even the 140s, I don't even I don't have any good feelings about any of those numbers because when I was that weight, I was considered really fat. Um, and as a matter of fact, I want to show you a picture and tell you a little story that illustrates that a little bit more. Just a second. So ago, I got the wise idea that I, I wanted a dress, or, okay, wait, let me start this over again. I wanted some item of clothing from my childhood, or I wish I had had something from college, just so I can kind of see the difference between my sizes today and my sizes years ago. Because I know that over time and vanity sizing or whatever, that I know that sizes have drastically changed, but I don't have any really good proof of that except for my memory and then I remembered that oh there is one item of clothing that is still around and that is my prom dress now I went to the prom I went to the senior prom um, in high school when I was around 15 years old I was dating a senior and so I went to the senior prom and I'm going to show you my prom picture I've showed this on Instagram once before Okay, so this is my prom picture. Now, 
the significance of this picture. The funny thing is, is that when I thought back and I tried to remember what size I thought this dress was, I thought it was like a 10 or a 12 is what I thought it was. Because when I went shopping for this dress, I remember I went to the mall, I went to all the normal prom dress stores that all the other girls shop at because I was only 15 and I could not wear the dresses in those stores because I was too big. I was too fat. I mean, I remember going to the stores and being in tears, uh, embarrassed that I couldn't even wear the clothes that was in these stores. You know, stores back then are not as forgiving with plus sizes. Even once I tell you what size this dress really is, you really will not believe it. So in order to the reason this dress doesn't look like your normal everyday prom dress is because I had to go to one of those dress shops. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but they sold some bridal gowns, but really dressy special occasion dresses for women. Not 15-year-old girls, usually, unless you were in a wedding. Um, but that was the only place where I could find somewhere that had my clothes that I could wear. Um, so I went there, I found this dress, and I still remember even then that I couldn't just have my pick of dresses. This dress is a size 8. So I'm a size 8, and yet I was considered so big that I could not really find normal clothes like clothes in a normal store for me to wear. And also around this time, now I don't remember what size pants I wore. I knew that I wore large tops. Um, but I do know that at my later years in high school, so like my junior, senior year, and my freshman year of college, I do remember wearing around a size 14 and having a hard time buying 14s because a lot of the regular stores didn't even carry size 14. They usually had some small rack that was in the back of the store. So it's like I could go shopping with my regular friends, regular friends, normal sized friends. However, I remember they would always have their run of the store and I would be in the back of the store looking at the rack that had the few plus size clothes size 14, not 14W, size 14, because in this picture, I believe I am about 150 pounds, 145 pounds uh, in this picture. And then by my freshman year of college, um, I was probably about 170 pounds. Um, so somewhere in there, that's when I was wearing a size 14, which is also kind of crazy because I can fit into some 14s now, and I'm 199 pounds. Hmm. So anyway, I do have this dress now. <laughs> it's in my closet, and it's a size 8. And I really will be interested to see how long it takes me to be able to fit in the dress. But I just remember feeling so fat, and I cannot believe that it was a size 8. I mean, I really did not remember that that dress was a size 8. And it was more, like I said, it was more than just a feeling of being fat. I was bigger than all the other girls. Um, I have prom pictures with me posed, um, like with some of my friends. I almost look twice as big. Well, I am twice as big because they were like size 2s and I was a size 8. So I don't know. I mean, I'm looking forward, of course, to getting smaller and I want to get smaller. But it's interesting that as I think about those sizes, I have negative memories in my mind about some of those sizes. And so I need to... Of course, forget about all of that and forget about the past, but it's just something that came up in my mind unexpectedly as I was looking down the road to what I have to look forward to, and then all of these thoughts came up about these sizes. Because a lot of people choose their goal weight based on how they felt previously when they were at that size. And so that's what made me start thinking, oh, okay, well, how did I feel previously when I was 150 pounds? 
Well, I felt like I was really fat when I was 150 pounds. Um, so, of course, you know, I'm just going to have to go by... I'll just have to see how I look in the mirror. I, you know, which you're probably like, well, of course, whatever. This is my rambling video. I'm just rambling away. But just for fun, while I am showing you pictures, I'm going to show you my senior one of my senior pictures. So I was 16 in this picture because I took it right before my senior year, I believe. And I was a year younger than the other kids because of because of how my birthday falls. Um, my birthday is September 4th, which is Labor Day. And it's also my nine-month anniversary is on my birthday. So yeah, so this is my senior picture. And I remember liking this picture, but being upset with myself for choosing such a light-colored dress because I thought it made me look fat. Wow. <laughs> and then as a quick reminder, as I'm pulling out pictures and going down memory lane, I found a picture of me my freshman year of college. Whoops. That's me. My freshman year of college. I know for a fact that I was wearing a size 14 uh, at this time. And I also know that this shirt was a large. I do know that because I remember having a hard time finding shirts in the college book sh bookstore. Um, now, I, the reason I wanted to show you that is because um, for those of you who are new to my channel or if you don't remember, my real weight gain <laughs> started in college. So... Um, I started getting migraines my freshman year of college, and they were so severe that I often had to go to the emergency room. And the doctors would give me pain medication, uh, really narcotics, because nothing else helped. You know, Tylenol didn't help. Sometimes aspirin helped, uh, but usually it didn't. And then this old-fashioned medication that I'm not even sure, I'm not even sure it's available anymore, um... Ergotamine, which can be a very dangerous medication. You you can't take, you can only take so many tablets in a whole week and only so many tablets in a whole month. Um, and so that, I used to take that also for my migraine headaches. And so the thing is, is that I used to get them so frequently, like several times a week, that I was afraid. I'm like, well, you know, I can't take the ergotamine. And I don't want to keep taking these narcotics because I don't want to get um, addicted <laughs> to the medication. So the doctors, so, you know, we, we worked together to try to figure out what was going to help my headaches. You know, a lot of times they use different blood pressure medications, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers are very often used to help people's migraines. I tried those. They did not work. Next, sometimes they try different antidepressants. We tried some of those, and they didn't work until they found one that worked. Now, this was a medication that, although it's an antidepressant, it has so many side effects that it is no longer used as an antidepressant at all. It's actually used for some of its side effects. Number one... It's used to help people sleep because it does make you extremely drowsy. And then they often also found that it can help with different types of chronic pain. So my mother has lupus, and she took this medication, 10 milligrams at bedtime, to help her sleep and to also help with her chronic pain. It also does help some people with fibromyalgia and some other uh, conditions. For me, me... It took a hundred milligrams of this medication in order to get rid of my migraine headaches. Now my mother takes 10 milligrams and it knocks her out. I was taking a hundred milligrams. So one of the big side effects of this medication was weight gain. As a matter of fact, it even changes the way that your body kind of reacts to carbohydrates. I think even, I think... 
I mean, I don't know this for sure because it's hard for me to remember. But I remember reading at the time. Now, it's funny because I've looked now at the package insert and it's not in there. But I know back when I was in pharmacy school and I was looking at the 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 insert that they have for the medication, I remember that it said that it increases your cravings for carbs and that it, it yeah, it causes you to, to crave carbs and that it also did something to the way that your body metabolized carbohydrates. I remember that. Um, anyway, my point is that within the first month of me starting that medication, I gained 30 pounds. I was horrified and the doctors were horrified and they took me off of it. But we tried other things and nothing else would work. And I was having these migraines and I wasn't able to function. And so I remember thinking, well, you know, I've already spent my entire life thinking that I was fat. So what's a whole bunch, you know, I'll just lose the weight later. You know, what? what's the big deal? Because it's more important for me to get through school. Well... One year after taking the medication, I had gained a hundred pounds. So I showed you that picture. This was my freshman year of college. Here I was, my freshman year of college. Here I am. It's not the best picture, but I'm going to block out this woman's face. This is me on my 21st birthday. <laughs> We're at a bar, and I just, you know, of course someone had to take a picture of me as soon as I took a shot of this really strong um, alcoholic drink. Um, so I don't, so I just know that by the time I was 21, I was already 270 pounds because of that medication. I was unable to get off of that medication for about 12 years. Um, I was on it and I was unable to get off of it. Um, I became dependent on it and then also, well for most of the years I couldn't get off of it because of my the migraines would come back. Then I got to the point where um, I didn't need it for the migraines anymore but my body had become dependent on the medication and so then it took me many years to wean off of the medication. And so I know that for many years a lot of my weight loss efforts were hindered by the fact that I was on that medication. I truly believe that it messed up my metabolism or something. To this day, I believe that. Um, and I'm rambling. What is my purpose of all this? I don't know what my purpose of of that part of the story was. I think it was because I have a whole lot of new subscribers and you might not have time to go back and hear my story, but that's how I became morbidly obese. Was um, So at the age of 21, uh, well, the, I was already obese by my 21st birthday, so sometime around the age of 19 or 20 is when I gained 100 pounds in a year and became morbidly obese. So now being back in Wonderland, actually, so, oh, I didn't even think of this. When I get to 169, which is my surgeon's goal, I will be back to where I was my freshman year in college before I took that medication that caused me to gain the weight and become morbidly obese. I just realized that. Well, hmm, that is a good goal number. And will I look like this? <laughs> I don't know, I just feel like I look so tiny in that picture, but I felt like I was so fat. Anyway, that's it for my rambling. I don't know. This is another video that doesn't really have a purpose, but it's just a fun walk down memory lane. Oh, darn it. I went over 15 minutes. I hate it when I go over 15 minutes.